I'm Mark Dawson from The Self-Publishing Show, and this is Self-Publishing Spotlight, where we shine a light on the indie authors who are changing the world of publishing one book at a time. Hello, and welcome to The Self-Publishing Spotlight. We meet indie authors at all stages of their careers and ask them a series of five questions. Five questions about their process, their mistakes, and their successes. Five answers that will help you level up your own author career. My name's Tom Ashford, and I'm part of The Self-Publishing Formula. Don't forget that you can get your self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. This week's guest is Sally Rigby. She's written 15 books in the thriller, young adult and non-fiction genres, and she lives in New Zealand. Welcome, Sally. Hello, Tom. Good to speak to you. So before we started, um, you talked about 15 books in your thriller, young adult and non-fiction genres, um, but you also spoke about two different pen names. So do you know- don't know if you wanted to just uh, to go into a little bit more detail about that and why obviously you've got different, um, very different genres. I will, yes. Um, first of all, I did some non-fiction books under my real name, Sally Rigby, and because I was working in education and doing sort of research papers and stuff like that, when I started um, writing fiction, I decided I should have a different name, so I had a pen name. And then because now I've gone in a totally different direction and I'm not in education and I've started writing crime fiction and self-publishing, I decided to go back to my original name or my real name, Sally Rigby. Yeah. Not least because when people used to say it was Sarah Hance, my pen name, and then I'd be at conferences and people would call me Sarah and I wouldn't, I'd ignore them because I wouldn't realise they were talking to me. Right. So I'm very happy being back to my original name. Nice. And and which genre are you going to sort of be using going forward? So are you still trying to tackle all of them? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. Um, I've left young adult and nonfiction and it's just crime fiction for me now. I'm really, really happy. Nice. Okay, well, let's dive in with the five questions. And the first one is the biggest and hardest of them, which is why do you write? Okay, well, I've listened to a lot of your other interviews and I've noticed that many people say that they have been writing since they were really young and it was something they'd always done but it wasn't the case for me at all I've always read I've read loads and as a as a kid I read loads but it didn't enter my head that I could possibly try to write and be an author because in my head authors weren't normal people like you and me. They were like on a higher plane and they knew lots of long words that I didn't. So it just right. didn't enter my head. But as I got older and after I'd got on to university and I'd worked in academia, I thought about writing a textbook. And then in one of the jobs I had, I had the opportunity to edit and contribute to a couple of them. I really enjoyed it. In fact, one of them, which came out in 2001, I'm still earning royalties on, nice. even though it's 18 years old. And so every year, a few hundred dollars land in my bank account, which is very nice because it's like free money. Yeah. So um, anyway, after that, so, I, so I'd done the nonfiction. Then I thought, I really want to write fiction. So I started writing Chicklet because that was what I was reading at the time and it was really trendy. But unfortunately, the Chicklet market died. But then... Fortunately, I suppose, the young adult fiction market took off. So I wrote a young adult book, got an American agent, and it sold. And then I published it in 2007. Nice. And I thought, yay, that was it. I've got a career for life. Yeah. But um, it didn't quite work out like that. The book did fairly well. It wasn't like you know bestseller. But unfortunately, the, the um, publisher didn't want the option book. Oh, okay. So, from nine, so 2007 until 2012, it took me, however long that is, seven, eight, nine, ten, five years and three agents, because I went through three more agents before I um, sold again and again to another American publisher. But they were a romance publisher, um, although the young adult line wasn't quite so romance. But um, then it changed, and then the young adult line became romance focused. But the trouble is, I'm not a romance writer and I don't read romance. And if you ask my husband, I'm not very romantic either. So um, but don't tell him I said that. Well, unless he listens to this. Yeah, you better cut that bit out. But yeah. so but I, what I did, I found myself a bit of a square peg in a round hole. Um, and that's when 
I mean, I had five books with them. The last one came out in 2017. But then that's when I decided to sort of kickstart self-publishing. I'd done a little bit before and write crime fiction. And even that wasn't straightforward. Yeah. I wrote a book. It was a legal thriller set in the States. And I sent it to an editor. And this was exactly a year ago. And when it came back, I looked at her comments and I thought, oh, God, it's not going to work. And I think the problem was I was trying to write American English. And I'm uh, not obviously American, I'm British. So I thought, right, drop that book. So I so I literally, I'd got all the comments back from the editor, paid for the edit and thought, right, I'm not writing this book. Told myself by the next morning, I'm going to come up with something else to write. I literally went to bed. I do this all the time, I have to say. And I said to my subconscious, do your thing. And by the next morning, my series, Cavendish and Walker, which is the series I'm writing, had been born. And I had it, you know, the next morning I got the idea there and I did it. So, and the rest is history. And in this past 12 months, I've now got a reader magnet and three books published. And I'm currently writing number four. And I've got outlines and covers for all of them up to including number six. And I've probably gone on rather too long on that question, sorry. No, that's great. Um, So you're a hybrid author, therefore. I am, yes. Would you go back and take another traditional publishing contract or would you prefer to move forwards with uh, self-publishing? Do you know, it honestly depends on what day you ask me. Yeah. Um, And how frustrated I'm getting with everything. Because obviously some days are good, some days are bad. I would not, if... I mean, if someone came on, it would have to be with my crime fiction series because that is it for me. I know I've found my niche. I know it's right for me. If someone came along and offered me a massive big advance, you know, I'm not saying I would turn it down. Yeah. Even Mark said that, um, you know, he, if he was offered something like, you know, seven figures or something, he'd he'd be tempted. So even those doing yeah. very, very well in self-publishing are still, you know, it, it's never off the table if it's the right deal. You're right. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as saying seven figures. No. Five, five, five would do me, actually. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, if we move on to question number two, which is how do you write? Um, which, obviously, there's different sort of sub-questions to that. And uh, the first one would be, uh, do you sort of plot your stories or do you sort of um, pants them? I am a plotter through and through, absolutely. Um when I first started, I mean, I, and I plan everything in real life. This is this will be no surprise to anyone that knows me. You know, I write lists about making lists. So, you know, I, I just plan everything. So when I first started writing, I came across something called the snowflake technique. I don't know if you've heard of it. I've heard of it. Yeah, I haven't used it personally. Yeah. Um, so I used it and I followed it religiously, but I liked some parts of it, but not others. So I sort of changed it a bit to suit me. But then from there... I went on to outlining using a beat sheet that one of my editors gave to me. And then once I'd worked the, the, uh, the uh, done the outline, then I would write a detailed scene spreadsheet, which um, obviously gives de- every single scene in the book is detailed. So I know everything that's going on in there. Um, and that's what I still use today. I don't use the beat sheet that this particular editor gave me, but I do use another one that I got. Um, not because I like doing that, because I hate it. Working out beats in stories just like it yeah. boxes me all the time. But one of my critique partners is brilliant at structure. I just know that if I don't do the beat sheet first, I might get the structure wrong. Right. Um, but then I have, I always have my scene spreadsheet. I print it off and I start writing a book. I scribble all over it because I do change it. Um, Nothing, you know, I add things, take things away, scribble all over it, but I have to work to that. I actually did try pantstering. I don't, pantstering, is that a word? Probably not. I tried being a pantster once, and honestly, I sat in front of the screen, couldn't write a thing. I just stared at it, and I didn't know what to do. Because I'd heard writers saying that if they plan, then it loses the joy for them, so they can't write. So they like to just, like, I think they discover as they go what's going to happen but not for me yeah I, guess. Um, I am just totally opposite yeah fair enough um so what sort of software do you use do you use scrivener or word or or what do you write I with have, i use word i have used scrivener in the past and um but for me i don't really need it because i've got my scene spreadsheet i don't use all the little cork boards and all that sort of stuff 
Yeah. So Word works fine for me. Okay. And, and is there a certain time and place that you prefer writing? I am a morning person, very much a morning person. I'm, I mean, I'm surprised I'm awake now talking to you. So yeah. like, if you hear snoring, you know, <laughs> you know what's happened. So, yeah, I get up early, very early in the morning and I write. I mean, I do other things as well. I always write first and I will work through the day and I stop at five o'clock because at five o'clock that's when the chase is on and right. everything stops for the chase. Okay. Uh, well, question number three uh, is, are you a full-time author? If you are, how did you get there? And if you aren't, what steps are you taking to make it happen? Yes, I am a full-time author, but I'm not paying my way yet. Okay. Um, really is the answer to that. Um, how did I get there? It was when we, we, we hopped over to Australia for five years, um, but preferred New Zealand so came back and we sold our business over there and when I came back I started life coaching and I was mainly ended up coaching writers and doing writing courses with um, a friend of mine but at the end of last year I decided I, f I finished with all my clients who finished with all the courses and I thought I'm going to commit myself totally to writing just to see if I could make a go of it so um, yeah so that's what I'm doing so yes full time but luckily we don't need my um, money to survive on. Okay. Well, question number four is uh, one that everyone's uh, everyone can definitely answer is, what mistakes do you think you've made? And uh, after that, what have you got right? Gosh, mistakes. How many? No. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the worst mistake I made was probably in 2015. That was a few years ago. I'd got the rights back for that first young adult book that I sold. And I wrote a couple of young adult novellas and a non-fiction book. So I did all the research on how to publish, how to put it up on Amazon and getting everything right. Because there was some stuff out there. I think it was um, Nick Stevenson was around then. Yeah. And can't remember who else. There was a few people out. So I did all that. And then in my infinite wisdom, decided to ignore the bit that said, you have to do some marketing. Right. Because I didn't like marketing and I didn't think it mattered because... I just, any time when I was with a traditional publisher and they wanted us to do anything related to marketing, I just like, oh God, no, I can't do that. So um, for the whole of 2015, funnily enough, I happened to be looking through the other day how much money I've made when I was comparing what I did now. For the whole of two, 2015, in the self-publishing arena, I made $200. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I think the moral of that story is don't be a dick and think you know best because in some instances you don't. Yeah. So that's probably my biggest mistake, I would say. But, but then I think, well, if I'd done it right, would I then now have moved on to writing what I really love doing, which is the crime fiction stuff, which I absolutely, you know, it's the best thing I've ever done. I, I wish I'd done it sooner, but I might not have done had my self-publishing taken off with the young adult stuff. Yeah. So maybe it was for the best. Yeah. Who knows? So uh, what did I do right? Yeah. Probably echoing what lots of other people, without question, 100%, taking the 101 course and the ads for authors. Of course. I'm, I mean, and, and I'm not just saying that because we're on um, the SPF podcast, but there's no way I would be where I am now if I hadn't taken it. I mean, I didn't know about it. It was recommended to me by an author friend here in New Zealand, and... She told me that she, she'd done the courses and made six figures in 12 months. Well, I nearly fell off my chair because I thought, oh, God, I want some of that. So, um, yes, I mean, if I hadn't have done that, who knows what would have happened. And I watch all the SPF videos. In fact, I've watched them over and over again. And I refer to them all the time when I'm doing something like a new launch or new ads just to refresh my memory and what to do. And I also do also follow other people as well because I think that's a good thing to do. So I listen to the SPF podcasts. I listen to Joanna Penn. I read blogs. I like Nicholas Eric and David Gochran. I've read books by Chris Fox and Deb Potter, Tammy Labreck. Um, the only thing I have learned is you have to be a bit more selective because you can suffer from information overload. Yeah. And also you get the situation where some people contradict each other. So you do have to work out. So what works for you, basically. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's nothing absolute. Everyone's going to have different uh, advice and different, you know, 
methods that worked for them and made them successful. 100%. Yes, you just, yeah, you've got to see what works. Some will, some won't. Yeah. Okay, and a final question, question number five is, what's your final piece of advice for authors starting out in indie publishing? I thought about this a lot because I know, obviously, that that was one of the questions and, you know, treating it as a business and things like that, 100% important. But what I thought, and I try not to sound too cliched here because I suspect I might be littering with these, but anyone starting out, you have to travel your own path because every person's journey, I, I put quote marks around journey because I know that journey is not a word that um, Mark and James likes. So yeah. Hopefully they won't hear that. But every person's journey is different. And not only that, you've got to enjoy it. Enjoy the process. You've got to celebrate every little milestone because they do add up, you know, each little step you take is sending you in the direction that you want to go. And with that in mind, don't compare yourself with others because that's fatal. In fact, I've got a good, I can tell you something that happened to me this week. Please do. I will. There's, um, I'm just releasing book three in my um, Cavendish and Walker series. And for the first time, I put it on a short pre-order. So like about a week. So the other day, I looked in Amazon at the pre-orders because I am in Amazon every five minutes, checking everything, obviously. And I'd got 24 pre-orders. I was so excited about that. So I emailed my critique partners, told my husband I was really excited. So probably about 10 minutes after I did that, I happened to be on Facebook and I saw Mark had got a post up there um, talking about how well he'd done. And he said that... Um, He's got a new Milton book coming out next month. 8,000 pre-orders. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the thing is, you can't let that deflate you. Mark and I are in different realms. Um, you know, and it didn't. I didn't care. I was still really happy because it was my journey, my little milestone. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to compare myself to Mark or anyone else. You've got to do that. You know, you've just got to go, yeah, travel your own path. That's what I'm trying to say. And the, the other thing I would also say is, um, so I'm giving two bits of advice, really. It's all good. Don't let everything overwhelm you because there is so much to learn and there are so many different ways of doing things. Um, you've got to do it one step at a time. It's a bit like you've heard the elephant joke, how do you eat an elephant? Oh, one bit at a time. Yeah, one bite at a time. And that is literally what you have to do with your self-publishing career, just take it one step at a time and that way you're not going to get overwhelmed. So yeah, basically my advice, tread your own path, enjoy the process and tackle everything in bite-sized chunks. Nice. And you never know, you know, in, in a year's time or two years time or 10 years time, you might be, you might have 9,000 pre-orders. One can hope. Exactly. I'd, I'd rather not do it in um, 10 years time. No, but who knows? But, um, yeah, yeah. But, I'm enjoying it anyway. It's yeah. been, it's great. Cool. Well, that's it for your five questions. Thank you very much for uh, coming on. You can, uh, you can go and have a sleep now. I'll need to. That's it for this week's self-publishing spotlight. Don't forget that you can get your free self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. And if you want to appear as a guest on this show, send us brief details about yourself and your writing at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash spotlight dash guest. I'm Tom Ashford and I'll see you again next week.